Hey friends, welcome back to now the 15th edition of What the Facts, the most frequently asked questions about nutrition. I was motivated to talk about supplements today. I received a question off of one of my uh, social media platforms about B12 after forgetting to put the link at the bottom, as I promised in last week's video. So I was called out. So I'll try to remember to put that link. It's Dr. Michael Greger's video on B12 supplement and address some of that in this video. I'll also address some other supplements that people that are eating plant-based should consider. And as well, I'll cover a little bit about cleanses. Some, some refer to it as colon cleanses, detox, you know, cleanses in general. So uh, first about supplements. So if you are eating a plant-based uh, diet, I like to call it lifestyle, and that means everything's plants or plant-based, but no meat, egg, or dairy. And when I say meat, I'm speaking of not just red meat, white meat. I'm also talking about chicken, pol you know, poultry, turkey, other fowl, um, as well as fish. I don't eat any of that as a as a uh, whole food plant based follower and now vegan. Uh, so if you're going to avoid these things, there are some supplements. If you're going to avoid the animal products, there are supplements you should take. And that includes uh, B12 first and foremost, because animals don't uh, animals have B12 in them. Some of the animals you consume. Um, but animals and plants don't make B12. B12 is made by bacteria. And as uh, Dr. Greger stylishly puts it, um, you'd have to eat dirt, bugs, and feces, and that's not something we want to eat. So you get your B12, um, the way to get your B12, by supplement if you're not eating meat, egg, or dairy, which means you're being healthier. And so the question comes, how much B12? Now, as I've said many times before, this is not a prescriptive venue. I am not prescribing or appealing to anyone on a personal basis as to what they should be doing with supplements or food for that matter when it comes to dramatic or drastic changes. You should discuss it with your doctor because some, some people I know have some underlying medical problems, maybe on medications. There can be drug interactions, even with vitamins. So discuss it with your doctor. But basically, uh, in Dr. Greger's video, and he's and his videos are based on research, based on science, he concludes, spoiler alert, he concludes that anyone, any adult or uh, older child or adult um, should be taking somewhere between 50 micrograms daily or up to 2,000 micrograms of B12 weekly. And that's in his video, which I will be posting a link to in the information section. Um, so B12 is important, and it's important for the uh, maintenance and development of our red blood cells. Our, our red blood cells are constantly being replenished, and for them to be healthy, B12, as well as for our uh, nerves for preservation of our nerves. And in fact, if you have B12 deficiency that's severe and prolonged, there can be some nerve damage that is irreversible. One, one blood test they often uh, order in the setting of um, people, older people that may be uh, suddenly confused or develop um, a, a confused state, dementia, is they'll check that B12, B12 level. On occasion, just replacing their B12 tends to bring them back to, to the norms of thinking and orientation. So B12 is important. It's a water-soluble vitamin, so that's why you'll see wide ranges of doses in the uh, at the store and at the at the uh, nutrition at the health centers or health stores. Uh, but Dr. Greger goes into detail on it, and so I, I highly recommend it. Now, another supplement that um, is much talked about is vitamin D. 
Vitamin D is actually a hormone. It's different from almost all the other vitamins because it's something actually we do make. We have the potential to make in our skin. And that's uh, from the rays of the sun, the UVB rays that can get to our skin, which can't come through glass. So sitting next to a window or just driving in your car with the window up and the air on is not going to give you enough sunlight. Uh, the duration of time, well, I guess it depends on how long you're driving, but it would probably take somewhere around 20 to 30 minutes, at least on an almost daily basis of good sunlight uh, to carry this out. And glass can block some of those rays. So you can't, uh, you know, you can't be inside and expect to get that, uh, have that process going. So vitamin D, uh, again, I'm not prescribing it, but general recommendations are somewhere around 2,000, between two and 4,000 international units daily. And um, that usually should, should get you to what you need. Now, the thing is, both vitamin D and B12 can be measured by simple blood tests. They're not blood tests that are sophisticated. So if you have an annual review, which adults should have every year, uh, ask them to check your B, vitamin D level and B12 level, because then that you can know what your needs may be, whether they should be, whether your needs may be a little higher, a little lower, and you can discuss it with your doctor. The other uh, supplements that often are talked about are omega-3. Uh, now, those omega-3 are, uh, are the fatty acids. They're based on fatty acids um, that have uh, this vitamin in it that needs to be extended. Not a vitamin, but has a, uh, a short-chained fatty acid in it that needs to be extended in our bodies to make DHA and EPA. And those are felt to... Those are known to be important for brain health, brain development. Uh, a very large percentage of our brain is made of omega-3 fatty acids. So uh, it's not an essential supplement. Uh, you can get your omega-3 from foods like um, ground flaxseed and hemp seed and um, chia seed have some omega-3 in it. Also, walnuts have omega-3 in it. And that's where I get predominantly my, my uh, omega-3. But I do take some uh, supplements. Uh, I have both my parents had dementia. One of them had Alzheimer's and the other had Lewy body, which is a similar type of degenerative uh, brain disorder. And so I'm compelled somewhat to, to fortify further with taking some omega-3 supplement. I'm not recommending it to you. I think you should research it, discuss it with your doctor. There's some evidence out there that it might increase the risk for prostate cancer. I'm not totally convinced of that yet. So that's why I still take some. I just make sure I, I take a modest amount and try to get most of my supplement from plants. So I do I, I, I do have ground flaxseed with my oatmeal or when I make my smoothie. Now, um, most well-rounded vegetarians and vegans and people that follow whole, fa whole food plant-based don't really need other vitamin supplements. I guess with the exception of those that restrict salt. Like I, I'm on salt restriction. I was on blood pressure medicines for 25 years and I was able to shed those medicines about five years ago when I went whole food plant-based. But I, I never use salt and I do a lot of cooking, which is the best way to eat. And I don't use the salt when I'm cooking. So I'd imagine I might be deficient in iodine because iodized salt uh, became available in the 1920s when Morton decided to put that in there because so many people were hypothyroid. And without that thyroid working uh, adequately, you can be sluggish and hyporeflexive and cold all the time and gaining weight with hardly out, without out hardly eating anything. So there's more to it than that. But the thing is, um, table salt being iodized has greatly reduced um, hypothyroidism on the basis of not having enough iodine. Uh, so um, if you are not eating or you're not using the salt shaker, which is healthier if, you're, if you have a history of high, high blood pressure, then you might need to, uh, some supplement. And it's about 150 micrograms daily required for the iodine. And I'm not a big supplement, pill supplement person. So I uh, try to get my iodine from sea vegetables. That's seaweed-based um, 
food. And there's uh, wakame, there's something called nori sheets. I just kind of work them into my stews and soups or um, sometimes salads, things like that. Just put a little, doesn't take much. Um, iodine also can, your iodine level also can be checked. And you don't want to overdo it. There's some sea vegetables like kelp that have, especially the flaked, the flakes or kelp, kelp shaker. That has a ton of iodine in it. So you want to be careful with that. Um, so that's pretty much it on the supplements. As far as cleanses go, I don't need to talk a lot about cleanses because I think the best cleanse is water. Okay? I said the best cleanse is water. Not any special of this, this juice, this blend, or anything like that. The best cleanse is water because your main detox center is the liver. Now, there's some other cells that help to get a few rid of some toxins, too, like your kidneys. Um, you even get rid of some toxins and through, through metabolic changes through some of the foods that you just eat can detoxify. So I'm not real big on uh, these special detoxing mixes that cost a whole bunch of money or certain blends of vegetables. If you just eat a whole lot of fruit and veggies, that's going to help. That fiber itself will detox. Now, some people consider fiber a supplement. If you eat enough fiber, you don't need any fiber supplement. The standard American diet is somewhere around 15, maybe up to 20 grams of fiber, and that's really small. But don't try to increase it or double or triple it in one day because your system's not ready for it. That bacteria will be overloaded. You know, gradually increase your fiber intake. Most fiber comes from beans and whole grains, but all plants have fiber. So if you're eating 99% plants, you are getting some significant fiber. But just try to have a balanced plate with your quarter of your calories coming from beans or other legumes. Another quarter coming from grains like your brown rice. And then your berries as your fruit and you know, other fruit. And all fruit has some fiber. And then um, your greens, your leafy green vegetables, those cruciferous, those cruciferous vegetables I was talking about. So you get plenty of fiber that way, as well as some from nuts and seeds. So that pretty much wraps it up. I didn't have a lot to say about cleansers. Not a big fan of commercial cleansers. I think drinking plenty of water. Yeah, the six or eight glasses a day, that gets that flowing going to the liver so you can detox. And then decreasing the amount of toxins your liver has to detox by not eating a lot of processed foods, by eating a lot of whole foods that have that fiber that helps carry some of those not so good or excess hormones right out the back end, carry out some of those fatty fatty foods that still make their way in that you don't need right out the back end, carry excess sugar right out the back end. That's the way to do it. All right, the tip of the day or week. Um, if you are a sodium restrictor like me, a good way to know when you do deviating and get some processed food, read that label. If the number of calories out um, outpaces the number that's of sodium in it in milligrams, you're okay. So in other words, if they're like 50 calories of, of sodium, and I'm sorry, if they're 50 milligrams of sodium, and they're 300 calories, you're great, you're good, because the milligrams of the sodium is much lower than the total calories per serving. So we're talking about per serving. That's how you can gauge about the level of sodium in a food. I'll sometimes see where there's 500 milligrams of sodium and 30 calories. That is salty. So anyway, that's how you avoid salt. I think I use this as a tip for at the end of one of my other videos. I'm sorry, I, I, I'm doubling on, down on it. But then again, I'm not sorry. It's so important that we don't eat, that we don't consume excess sodium. Have a good week. Uh, press the like on this uh, video, if you please, if you liked it. And certainly check out my website, www.fearlessmd21.com. I post something on it every week, not just these videos, but I post an article every week. And I usually post a dish every week. It may be an uh, entree. It may be a dessert but a plant-based dish. All right, see you next week. Have a great week. Bye-bye.